Oklahoma Memorial Coliseum as the number six Oklahoma Sooners return from the bye week, ready to open up conference play versus Bill Snyder's gritty Kansas State Wildcats. And here comes OU. Johnson along with Charles Davis and welcome to Norman and Charles after having a chance to spend some time here at OU over the last couple of days you get the feeling that change is in the air. I agree with you and normally we know that Oklahoma has an identity. We know how the Sooners are going to play but they're trying to get back to what they call Oklahoma football. They want to get back to being a tough football team, not just physically, but mentally. Last year, a number of breakdowns, especially on the defensive side of the ball, that cost them. They want that toughness back. To wit, they brought back Mike Stoops, back to be the defensive coordinator. He's trying to instill that in his team. Meanwhile, for a Bill Snyder team, you know how they're going to play every time they hit the field. Persistent, relentless. Bill Snyder is going to wrench every ounce of effort and talent out of his team each and every week. And the guy that leads them is their quarterback, Colin Klein. He's going to lead them not just on the field as they come on now, but during the ball game. If he runs the ball well, look out. We've got a game deep into the fourth quarter. All right, so coming up, it's Kansas State taking on Oklahoma. Two undefeated teams as the conference schedule begins in Norman. Norman, Oklahoma, the Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, and this is Fox College Football, presented by Geico, where this evening, Kansas State undefeated invades Norman to take on the sixth-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. Gus Johnson along with Charles Davis, time to join the third member of our team on the sideline, who moments ago met with Bob Stoops, Julie Alexandria. Coach, how is the preparation different going up against a quarterback like Colin Klein? Well, it's just the extra, they have the extra blocker since the quarterback's running with the football. So, we've got to be really disciplined in how we handle our gaps and tackle well. And tell me about the surprise that is Damian Williams at running back. Well, he's a, he's a special guy, really a powerful guy. He's been really responsible with the ball and blitz pickup. So, he's, he's doing everything really well. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Good luck to you, Coach. And thank you very much, Julie. As we take a look at the series note, Oklahoma 8-1 versus Kansas, Kansas State under Bob Stoops. But the series is tied at four apiece when both teams are ranked. Oklahoma winning big last year on the road. As we take a look at the weather, 88 degrees this evening at kickoff time. So Oklahoma won the toss. They defer. Kansas State will receive the dangerous Tyler Lockett Back deep for the Cats. Patrick O'Hara, the kickoff specialist, sends it away. And this unreturnable. And because of the new rules in college football, Kansas State will start from the 25. And that brings us to this evening's Taco Bell Impact Players. Colin Klein, the quarterback, no player more valuable to his team in the country than he is to Kansas State. Tyler Lockett in the kick return game, one of the most dangerous players in the country. And Arthur Brown, they call him the judge at linebacker. He dispenses justice with his pads. First down at 10 of the 25. Incredible electric atmosphere in Norman. Klein, he'll run it on first down with room. And Colin Klein pushes forward and picks up seven. Corey Nelson with the tackle. Then for Oklahoma, they're impact players. Landry Jones, the quarterback, really got in shape in the offseason. He's ready to roll. Damian Williams, you heard Julie Alexandria ask Bob Stoops about him. He's been a pleasant surprise. And Tony Jefferson, the safety, their best defensive player, perhaps, playing with a, a sore ankle this evening. Second down and three at the 32. Klein shuffles with a blocker in front of him. 
Cuts it inside. Colin Klein all the way up to the 45-yard line. Javon Harris with the tackle, but that's a gain of 13. And Gus, in the, right at the top of the show, Julie Alexandre asked Bob Stoops about how is it different to prepare for Colin Klein at quarterback as opposed to a so-called conventional one. And Bob Stoops talked about the extra blockers in the quarterback run game. On the first two plays, we've seen that come to pass already. The lead blockers for Colin Klein clearing a path. Last year against Oklahoma, Klein, 26 carries, 92 yards, two touchdowns. First down to the 45. Huber, the deep man. And they give it to him over the left side with room. And Hubert stumbles forward and gets to the 44 before being tripped up by Javon Harris. But that's a 10-yard gain. So in the last three plays, seven yards, 13, and now 10. Look at this side of the line of scrimmage for Kansas State. That's Cody Whitehair, 55. Cornelius Lucas, 78. B.J. Finney, 66 to center, working a double team. And they create a nice crease for a big pickup by Hubert. Last week, Hubert 12 carries, 38 yards, and a touchdown against North Texas. First down and 10 to the 45, out of the shotgun. Now Klein lines up in the slot. Here's an added wrinkle by Bill Snyder. Klein hands it off to Hubert again, running left this time. And Hubert to the 40. Brought down on the play, Aaron Franklin, Tony Jefferson in the vicinity, but it's a gain of four. What they have to be careful of is the secondary now for Oklahoma, because Tony Jefferson was very active on that play near the line of scrimmage, getting to Colin Klein. If they overcommit against the run, that's when they go play action and try and hit them deep. Klein yet to throw a pass. Second and six at the 41, opening drive for K-State. Now Klein will throw it far side and incomplete. Chris Harper, the intended receiver, DeMontre Hurst covering. Last week against North Texas, Colin Klein completed 15 of 20 passes for 230 yards and two touchdowns. 11 carries, 85 yards, and a score as well. Third down and six for Kansas State at the OU 41. And a timeout now called by the Sooners. 12.42 to play in the first quarter. Kansas State driving but facing a big third down when we come back. No score, first quarter. Oklahoma and Kansas State, these two teams met last year in Manhattan. Oklahoma winning it 48-17. Big game for Landry Jones, but right now, K-State faced with a third down at six at the 41. They need to go to the 35 for a first down. Look how they've spread them out. They've got the box count reduced. He could still run against this even on third and six. Klein, he'll take off with running room. And Klein dives forward. He needed to get to the 35. He's at the 36. Julian Wilson with the tackle. So Bill Snyder with a decision to make, and he makes it quickly. He brings his punt unit on. Look what they did. They got the box count reduced. Really, I counted six. It's really more like five. So Colin Klein felt like with the five blockers up front, he might have had an opportunity, but an excellent tackle in the secondary by number two. Julian Wilson stops him short of a first down. Brings on Ryan Doerr, the senior from Katy, Texas, averaging close to 45 yards per punt, standing at the 49. Justin Brown, the Penn State transfer, back deep, lets it go over his head, and dies inside the 10, down at the nine. A 26-yard punt. So here come the Oklahoma Sooners on offense. Landry Jones, 6'4", 218, senior from Artesia, New Mexico. Last year against Kansas State, he threw for a career high and school record 505 yards and five touchdowns. And when you balance that against the fact he threw two interceptions the same day and still Oklahoma wins 58-17, to 17, 
a monster afternoon for Landry Jones and Oklahoma offense, especially in the second half. So OU starts on first down, empty backfield. Jones with time underneath, and it is caught at the 16 by Kenny Stills. Randall Evans wraps him up. This, Eight of seven. This unit has not played as fast as, as, in, as in past years for Oklahoma in the first two games. A lot of new faces, a lot of moving pieces. I think they really wanted to be more, more sure about guys understanding assignments before they sped up. Now they're at the line of scrimmage, but they're still not operating at warp speed as we've seen in the past. Dominique Whaley, the walk-on sensation last year, given a scholarship in the backfield. He broke his ankle late in the season. Coach, you say he's trying to knock off the rust. They give it to him. Over the left side, and he's close to the first down. Needed to get to the 19. John Sua, the senior from Santa Maria, California, making the tackle. Oklahoma had an open week last week, and they felt like that really helped them offensively. Guys trying to learn each other. All these young receivers coming together, even the tight ends, and a reshuffled offensive line. We'll see if it pays dividends as this game moves along. First down and 10. Jones, draw play. Whaley. And Dominique Whaley gets to the 30 and picks up a first down. It must be a strange feeling for this young man because he broke his ankle in the K-State game last year. And you can see that he's running for redemption already because Damian Williams has come out and played very well at the start. People are starting to forget that Dom Whaley was a big producer last season. Folks, when you see Damian Williams, if you haven't seen him, he's a junior from San Diego. An injured Wildcat on the field. But this kid, Damian Williams, junior college transfer, can really play the game. Kind of reminds you of an old school back from Oklahoma. As Gerald Childs has to be helped up. Now let's join Aaron Andrew Andrews in the studio. Gus, we're going to go to Pullman. The Colorado Buffs looking for their first win of the season. Fourth and goal from the four. Jordan Webb runs it in. His second rushing touchdown of the game. That would tie it up. Extra point was good. And Colorado beats Washington State 35-34, to their first win of the year. Huge win for John Embry and the Buffaloes. I mean, I don't think you can oversell how big a win that was for that program today. First down at 10 of the 30. Opening drive for OU. Whaley still in the backfield. Andrew Jones gives it to him over the left side. And Whaley crosses the 35, gets up close to the 38. Ty Zimmerman, the safety, with the tackle after an eight-yard game. Expect to see a number of backs carry the ball for Oklahoma, but if, a one, if one back gets the hot hand as Whaley has now, they'll continue to ride it. And this is the Twire, the freshman from Whitehorse, Texas, with the catch. Meshack Williams stops him after a gain of four. They're so excited about that young man, and he's put in some extra time during the open week with Landry Jones. He and Justin Brown, who transferred in from Penn State, all of them trying to get in sync before this season gets too much further down the road. So a first down at the 42 for Oklahoma. Miller. Whaley in the backfield, and here's the handoff. And this time, plenty of running room. Roy Finch gains 11. Oklahoma quick to the line of scrimmage once again. Whaley. And Whaley to the Kansas State 43. Alan Chapman brings him down after a five-yard game. I think we're seeing the effects of the open week already. A much more comfortable Oklahoma offense in the early going. Able to stay on the line of scrimmage and move a little bit quicker than they did in games one and two, move, putting the ball in play. Second down and five. Whaley in motion out of the backfield. Here's a screen. Miller. And Miller caught from behind. Terrific open field tackle. Allen Chapman gets an ankle. 
When it's a space game, you have to make tackles like that. If Alan Chapman does not make that play, that gain is considerable for Oklahoma. Nicely done by Chapman coming up in this corner position. No gain on the plate, third down and five down for OU at the Kansas State 42. Landry Jones looking for Stills. And he has it at the 28-yard line. Kenny Still. That ball thrown behind him. He made a nice adjustment. Quarterbacks will sometimes throw the ball back shoulder to stop a receiver from crossing into a defender's area. But on that play, I think he just threw it behind him. That was a crossing route with the potential to put it on Stills and continue upfield. Really nice adjustment by Stills coming back for the ball. So first down at the 28. Jones, play fake. Jones across the middle, incomplete. Intended for Kenny Still. Talk about balance. You know, balance isn't always a 50-50 run pass. Balance really is you doing what you want on offense. Being able to throw it when you want to, being able to run it when you want to. But so far, they're right down the middle in play selection. So this is the 10th play of the drive that started at the Oklahoma nine-yard line. They told us they weren't going to play fast. I guess they lied. <laughs> <laughs> Second and 10 at the 28, Landry Jones. Jones all day to throw underneath Kenny Stills, his go-to man. And Stills has it inside the 20, and a late flag on the play. Trey Walker, the outside linebacker, with the tackle. Like the way Stills finished the catch and got up field to get the first down. After he caught it, made his cut, turned right up field. First down. Tom Walker, your referee. Watch at the end. Stills catches it, makes the cut, knows where the first down marker is. You see Trey Walker get his hand on the mask of Stills. But how about Stills with an understanding of space and where he was on the field and knew where the sticks were? So that brings up first down and goal at the nine-yard line. Landry Jones calling his play at the line of scrimmage as he takes a look at his sideline. Damian Williams in the backfield over the middle. Incomplete. The ball intended for Green. I think he was a little excited on this play. It was so open that Landry Jones, I think, sped up his mechanics to the point where he ended up going so fast, he ended up making the throw behind him. He could have taken a little bit off and just put it on him. He was wide open, but I think when he saw it, he leapt to it just a little bit too quickly. Brandon Green from Altamont, Kansas. Junior college transfer. Grew up a K-State fan. Second down and six. And goal, rather, at the nine. This time it's Williams running left. And Williams chopped down. Great pursuit by Ty Zimmerman. Ty Zimmerman's a candidate for all Big 12 honors. He was a high school quarterback. No one wanted him coming out of high school. Played for his dad there. Gray shirted. His father, Randall, was his coach. They won a state title. He converted to defensive back and has started every game in his Kansas State career. Third down goal. They move it back to the 11. Damian Williams in the backfield. Jones in the shotgun. Looking. Bounces out of the pocket. Throws on the run. Incomplete. Stills the intended receiver. So Kansas State bending but not breaking. That's what we've seen from Kansas State over the years. You can run a lot of plays. You can eat up a lot of yardage. But trying to score, extremely difficult. Oklahoma had all the momentum going their way, and Kansas State found a way to shut it down and force a field goal attempt. So that brings in Michael Honeycutt. One for two this season. He made one from 38 yards, missed from 44, from 28 yards away. And good. So Oklahoma on their opening drive, 15 plays, but Bob Stoops and Sooners have to settle for three.
Fox College Football is sponsored by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Gus Johnson, Charles Davis, Julie Alexandria. Norman, Oklahoma, 3-zip. OU scoring 15 plays on the drive, but the Sooners settled for three. Happy with the three, but understanding that when you put threes on the board instead of sixes, you keep Colin Klein and, and Kansas State style of offense well into the game. Patrick O'Hara will send it away. Tyler Lockett looking for an opportunity to return one. As you take a look, 15 play drive covering 80 yards. They ate up 535. We'll take a knee once again. 6-16 to play in the first quarter. Here comes Colin Klein. Some have been referring to him as Optimus Klein because of his toughness and integrity. And he'll be on the field right after this. Introducing the UPS Team Performance Index, a new statistical measure that looks at the efficiency of a team's offense, defense, special teams, and miscues to define their competitive advantage. Check out the UPS Team Performance Index throughout the season for a look at the logistics behind a winning team. As Kansas State comes back on the field, first down and 10 at the 25. Collins line. Hey State on their opening drive. Five rushes for 39 yards and one incomplete pass. Next line rolling out, delivers on the run. Beautifully done. Tyler Lockett with the catch. And Kansas State defense, you talked about it, bend but don't break. And that's a good sign for them, especially when you consider that Oklahoma is deadly this season in the red zone. They came into this game 10 for 10 in the red zone. All 10 times they had scored touchdowns. First time this season they held them to a field goal, and that's a big, 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 big advantage for Kansas State. So first down for Klein at his own 36. Klein with a jump pass caught by Harper, but he is wrestled down immediately by Aaron Colvin. Aaron Colvin played safety last year. They moved him back to the corner. An aggressive play. Good read. Had his eyes in the right place, meaning he read his keys perfectly, saw the play in front of him, and got inside the block before it could be affected on him and made the tackle. Second down at eight at the 38. Line. Trying to find a hole, and this time he won't do it. And he'll be tackled for a loss as Corey Nelson and Tony Jefferson combine on the tackle. And how about Oklahoma reading their keys? Because what they did was they followed the lineman pulling to the play. Watch. Colin Klein gets the blocker. He gets number 79, Keenan Taylor, out front. But Oklahoma just followed him down the line right to the football. Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator, eight years as the head coach in Arizona, comes back again to Norman to work with his brother, and he is a fiery, fiery coach. Third down and nine at the 37. And a flag on the play, R.J. Washington trying to get an early start. Offside, defense, number 11, five-yard penalty, the third down. Coach Stoops, when we talked to him yesterday, the thing that he kept bringing up, his team needs to be persistent. Persistent, and the toughness he kept talking about, he meant mentally. That was a mental error for Oklahoma. Third and long now goes to third and more than manageable for Kansas State, because with this offense, it's not necessarily a throwing down with Colin Klein back there. Third down and four at the 42. Klein thinks about running it. Now fires. Ball caught Hubert. First down. Kansas State. First with the tackle. 
And that drive a defensive coordinator crazy. Third and nine, you've earned the right to rush the passer. That's what they tell you on defense. That's why you win first and second down. Third and long, now you get a chance to go get it. But when you jump offside and make it third and short, changes everything. The advantage goes back to the offense because the playbook widens out. First down and 10 at the 47-yard line. Wilson and Schubert out of the offset eye in the backfield behind Collins' line. And second man through Hubert. And Hubert cuts it inside and picks up about five on the play. Javon Harris grabs him. I thought Coach was very interesting when we talked to him yesterday. Coach Mike Stoops. And he said that Kansas State, which you guys have to understand, they run three different offenses at the same time. Yeah, he's talking about you'll see Colin Klein under center. All right, and you'll see one back, sometimes two backs in the backfield. You'll see Colin Klein in the pistol formation. About four yards behind the, the center with a back back there with him. And then they'll run veer option out of it. They'll run quarterback power. You name it, they can do it. Second down at five of the 48. Klein again. He'll follow Hubert. Klein gets outside and is chopped down by Jefferson. He picks up a yard. And when you talk about that pistol, that we got from Chris Alt, the head coach at Nevada, who created this. You'll see him in a shallow shotgun about four yards behind the center, often with a back behind him or beside him. It helps with the downhill runs. You get the power runs out of your running back. It also helps with play action. You can fake the power run and throw it. It's a nice package and another option that Oklahoma has to be ready to defend. Another third down for Kansas State. Cats need four at the 47. Klein to the sideline, incomplete. <laughs> Intended for Tyler Lockett. And that will force the Wildcats to punt it away. Good defensive possession for Oklahoma. This is where a strength of Kansas State tries to come to the front. We saw Ryan Doerr last year in the Texas game. He was probably the MVP for them that night with his punting and ability to pin them deep. Can he do it again now and help out his defense? Doerr standing at the 38 and a half. Justin Brown at the 11. Here's Doerr, wobbly punt. And fair caught at the 18. Oklahoma with a three to nothing lead Landry Jones no problem moving the Sooners up and down We'll see if he can finally get six after this Fox College football is sponsored by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go By Taco Bell sometimes you gotta live Moss and by Firestone, reminding you that whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Three zip, Oklahoma with the lead and the football. Folks, join us next week as we travel 85 miles north of here for a Big 12 battle between number 12 Texas and the rated Big 12 champion Oklahoma State Cowboys. Coverage begins with the Ford Fox College Saturday pregame show, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. Tell you what, Texas looked good last week on the road in Oxford. They did, David Ash, their sophomore quarterback played awfully well, but how about J.W. Walsh stepping in for West Lunt at quarterback last week for Oklahoma State, over 700 yards of offense. On first down, this is Justin Brown who transferred from Penn State with the catch because of the Jerry Sandusky child sex abuse scandal. Penn State players were allowed to transfer. Justin coming here, and Coach Stoops is so pleased that he got a leader from Happy Valley. And he's going to still graduate with a Penn State degree. He only needs nine hours of school left to graduate in three and a half years. Got to camp a few days late, picked up the playbook like he's been at Oklahoma for four years. Coach said in less than a week. Second down at seven at the 21. Miller and Williams. In the backfield. Play clock winding down, and Landry Jones will burn a timeout. Second call timeout for Oklahoma in the first quarter. 1-10 to play. OU up 3-zip. One ten to play in the first quarter. Oklahoma faced with the second down and seven at the 21. Kansas State trying to slow down the Sooners a bit. 
Jones, drop play, Williams, and Williams about a yard and a half, two yards short of the first down. Javante Boyd with the tackle from behind. Will you quickly to the line of scrimmage, third down to Williams again, won't get it. He will not get the first down. So that brings up fourth down. Let's see what Oklahoma elects to do. Looks like they're trying to get back to the line of scrimmage and go for it. No, here comes a punt team. Yeah, they, they, if they had any thoughts about going for it, they discarded those quickly looking at field position with only a three to nothing lead on Colin Klein. They made the prudent move. And on defense, John Sua, number, excuse me, number 92, Viola Tui, and number 99, Javante Boyd, stacked up the last play and prevented the first down. So Tremaine Thompson will return for Kansas State, standing at his own 25. The Wildcats rank first in the nation in punt returns with an average of 36.25. And that one out of bounds and spotted at about 28. And that will bring us to the end of the first quarter with the score, Oklahoma three. Kansas State, nothing. Fox College football will be back after these messages. Welcome back to Fox College football presented by Geico. Here at Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, opened in 1923, and this is the 82nd straight sellout this evening. Colin Klein handing it off. Hubert. Maybe a yard on the play. Actually, they give him two. So far in the first quarter, pretty even yardage. Oklahoma with 79 yards of total offense. Kansas State with 62. You notice Tony Jefferson, number one, sprained an ankle against Florida A&M. They rested him a bunch in the open week and getting ready for this game. Has twice made really aggressive knifing plays at the line of scrimmage on run plays. Kansas State's coaches will keep an eye on that play action to follow. Second down and eight at the 31. Klein. And Klein up to the 35. It's an interesting running style he has, isn't it? Because, Very interesting. Because he has such patience for a big man, and he kind of sifts his way through at times. And once he has open space, then he turns it on with power and more speed than you think. One for three on third down conversions. Third down and four at the 35. Klein, pump fake. Goes up top, incomplete. Chris Harper, the intended receiver. And Kansas State forced to punt it once again. And if there is a knock on Colin Klein, it is his throw. And it's the motion, but he's going to need help from his receivers. They've got to win outside. They've got to win one-on-one -on -one battles against these really fast, athletic corners of Oklahoma. If they can't get away and give him a little bit of space to put the ball in, it'll be a long night throwing for Kansas State. Ryan Dorr in the punt for the third time at his own 20. Justin Brown inside his own 20. Back pedals and signals for a fair catch and has it at the 16. A 49-yard punt. Start of the second quarter. Oklahoma leading 3-0. Welcome back, Oklahoma trotting back on the field with a three to nothing lead over Kansas State. We'll start at the 16 yard line. Landry Jones. Jones, six of nine, 37 yards. He's got Dominique Whaley in the backfield with him. Four carries, 27 yards for Whaley. That's a movement on the left side. Ball start, offense number 85, five yard penalty, first down. That'll be Grissom, the starting tight end. Converted defensive end. As we take a look at some of the offensive leaders, 
for OU. Kenny Still, three catches for 30 yards. Got to get an updated picture of Kenny Stills. He's got the blonde mohawk. <laughs> it's hard, though. It's a moving target. <laughs> One week is blonde, the next week is not. That's tough on the Sports Information Department of OU. First down. And we Arthur Brown with the tackle. He's their senior linebacker. Suffered an ankle injury last week against North Texas. Came back and played after the injury in the first quarter. Had 13 tackles for the night. They thought he was done for the evening when he first came off the field. And he worked his way through it and was productive the rest of the game. Second down and 13. This is the third OU drive that has started inside the 20. So Ryan Dorr effective already as the starting punter for Kansas State. Trips at the top of your screen. Twins at the bottom. Andrew Jones over the middle. And incomplete. Whoa. Somebody got clobbered. And it looks like McGuire, the freshman Trey McGuire. And was he hit by his own player or was he hit by a Kansas State player? Because it was double crossing routes, one shallow, one a little bit deeper. Watch the throw in the middle. There's McGuire crossing. No, Arthur Brown got Brown. it. Yes. This is what they call chucking a receiver, but actually he was making a play on the ball. And Arthur Brown, this is why they call him the judge. He will dispense his justice with his pads. The Miami transfer, Arthur Brown. <laughs> Preseason All-America candidate. One service ranks him the fourth best inside linebacker in the nation. Leads Big 12 with 28 tackles already, seven of them solo. As Trey McGuire gets looked at. And Gus, last year, when Chris Kosh was still here as the defensive coordinator, he spent a lot of time with Arthur Brown talking to him about being a more vocal leader. Middle linebacker need to be a little more of a holler guy. It's quiet by nature, but when you make plays like that, you don't have to say that. Speak, that speaks <laughs> volumes, doesn't it? Brown, the Big 12 defensive newcomer of the year and first team all Big 12 selection last year as Bob Stoops comes out to take a look at his freshman. So McGuire walking off on his own. Trying to shake it off. That's a good sign for a receiving core that really doesn't have much experience after Kenny Stills. Everyone else, either freshmen, not much experience, or transfers in, such as Justin Brown from Penn State. That'll make it third down and 13. There's Brown at the 13-yard line for Jones. Pressure now. Jones lost it. Picked up. Touchdown, K State. Child with the fumble recovery. Jarrell Giles, the senior from Kansas City, picks it up, gets it in the end zone. Justin Tuggle with the sack. And the Cats take the lead. The coverage downfield was tight. Now watch Landry Jones' pocket presence. As he retreated, he retreated right back into Justin Tuggle. Watch, see as he tries to get away from Childs 26. Not aware that Tuggle's behind him. He actually tried to get away from him. Gabe Brown, the hit was made. Touchdown, Kansas State. Kansas State with 12.20 to play in the second quarter. The Wildcats add the extra point. And on the road, Kansas State taking a 7-3 lead over OU. The Cats physical to start. Fox College Football is sponsored by the 2013 Buick Verano. Unexpected luxury in a car this size. 
Coach Bill Snyder, we told you during our open that his teams always play gritty. They play tough with incredible urgency. The defense has made a major adjustment. You take a look. Most non-offensive touchdowns since 99. Kansas State tied with Frank Beamer and Virginia Tech. They know how to attack the football on defense. They create big plays on special teams, leading to those 84 non-offensive touchdowns. Inside the five, Brennan Clay gets to the 20. And Brennan Clay out of bounds, crossing the 35. Anthony Cantelli with the tackle. And this is how Kansas State scored. They got a third and long. Coverage, terrific downfield. Justin Brown can't get open. Look at the guys on the other side. Inside, Stills not open, Grissom not open. But watch here, here are the two principals. Tuggle to the outside, Childs at linebacker. Watch the rush on third and 12. You get Tuggle past him, then Childs forces him back into Tuggle, who strips Landry Jones for a touchdown. That's the first sack that Kansas State's gotten against Oklahoma in their last four games played. The seventh sack this year for Oklahoma. Sooners start at their own 40. Here's the handoff, and it's Williams. So Oklahoma opened up this game. Their opening drive, 15 plays. They went 80 yards, and they settled for a field goal. Since then, they've been three and out. Their last drive, three plays, and then the fumble and touchdown. Over the middle, and he jumps to Brown. And Brown stopped by Nigel Malone. But he will gain 15. Gus, on the previous drives, Kansas State was starting to win the early downs. Remember, the last drive started with a penalty. That set Oklahoma back, led to third and long. But this drive, they got good yardage on first down. On first down, Damian Williams. Ryan Mueller with the stop. See, that's what Kansas State has to do. They've got to win first down, make it second and long. Win second down, get to third and long. Then they get a chance to unleash their pass rush against Landry Jones. And Oklahoma, they've struggled a little bit protecting their quarterback in the first couple of games. Second and nine of the 44. Jones fakes the draw, sets up over the middle. Sterling Shepard, the freshman from Oklahoma City, finds a soft spot in games 24. And look how fast they're going to go. You know how it is, Gus, when Oklahoma gets an explosive play, a 10-yard run or more, a 15-yard pass or more, they get right to the line of scrimmage and get at it. From the Kansas State 20. Secondary coverage by Kansas State. Damian Williams, the intended receiver. Second down and 10. Landry Jones, 8 of 13, 74 yards. And he stills. In the slot up top. Jones near side. Shepard again. And he'll hop out of bounds inside the 10. An 11 yard gain. Jared Milo escorting him out of bounds. How about the effort Woo! as he jumps over the All American corner, Nigel Malone? And he's a legacy. Sterling Shepard, father, Derek Shepard, All America. Deep all American player here at Oklahoma. As you take a look at the numbers for Oklahoma inside the red zone, first down and goal of the nine. And a handoff. Williams down at the one. And you know what we haven't seen yet? The short yardage package that they call cat, or we know as the bell dozer. And 
here comes the belldozer. And the last time they were inside the red zone, they didn't use that at all. They went conventional offense. Now we see the belldozer for the first time this season. Blake Bell, sophomore from Wichita, Kansas, 6'6", 254. So a timeout called. Oklahoma with the ball on the one. Hey, coming up, Eddie and Joey will be with me on the Pizza Hut halftime. Rivals Michigan and Notre Dame square off. And how is number two LSU doing at Auburn? Plus, Clemson battles Florida State. We'll get you caught up next on the Pizza Hut halftime. Welcome back to Norton. 9.35 to play, second quarter. Kansas State with a 7-3 lead after the fumble return for a touchdown. But... The Sooners with the ball at the one. Blake Bell, affectionately known around these parts as the Bell Dozer, with his two big fullbacks, Rikowski and Miller. Not a lot of secrecy in what he's going to do. Oh, he fumbled it! And Kansas State has it! Second fumble of the night for Oklahoma. Ty Zimmerman jumping on the football. And that's the danger, as you talk about all the time, of having multiple players play the quarterback position. When you bring a guy in off the bench cold, sometimes this can happen. Remember, they have not run the belldozer at all this season in an actual game. Last year, very effective. He had 13 rushing touchdowns. That time, he tried to get his body in motion before he secured the ball. Ty Zimmerman pursuing straight ahead with Meshack Williams hops on the football. Kansas State taking over. At their own six, leading 7-3. Huber breaks it back, and Huber will pick up nine. Tony Jefferson with the tackle. When you look at Kansas State, many people will look at that play and say, boy, were they fortunate. The kid drops the football. But Kansas State was there to capitalize. They came with the pursuit, got into the backfield. It's no accident that this team last year was plus 12 in turnover margin, second in the Big 12. Second down and one at the 15. Harper in motion. Huber looking for the first down, spins, stays on his feet and has more. On second and one, he'll pick up six. Jefferson with the tackle with Indule. And that was a play that should have been made by Javon Harris, number 30, the strong safety. And he was hurt on the play. He came up and thought he had a nice target and didn't get all of Hubert. As Hubert took the initial hit and spun away, Harris hurt on the play. First down for Kansas State. Huber running left. And Huber, watch out! At the 40. Huber out of bounds at the Oklahoma 43 yard line. Tony Jefferson chasing. If you give Kansas State opportunities, they tend to make you pay. Watch the big guys up front create the hole. Misdirection is they pulled two offensive linemen to the right and hit them back on the left side. Excellent block there by Harper, number three, on the perimeter. John Huber Caney, 36, became the 25th career 1,000-yard rusher at Kansas State this season. First down and 10 at the 43. Hubert again. And this time, Hubert spinning. Goes down hard. Great open field tackle by Aaron Colvin. And Hubert up slowly. Hubert's listed at 5'7", 191. The thing that you like about him is that he runs like he's 225. Uh, he wants to run big. And most of the time, and we just saw it there, Colvin with a good open field tackle, but Huber still spun forward and finished the run going in the direction of the opposite end zone. Second and seven of the 40. Kansas State, 9, 6, 36, and 3. 
in their last four plays. Klein rolling up. And they missed it. Caught by Wilson for a one-yard gain. Now let's go to Aaron Andrews in the studio for an update. Gus, update from Tallahassee. Remember, Florida State's defense hadn't given up a touchdown heading into this game. Well, they've given up two tonight to the Clemson Tigers. Tigers up 14-7, to that first quarter winding down in Tallahassee, guys. Wow. Gus, do you know that Florida State has not won a home game against a ranked team since 2005? Who would have thought it? Quite some time. Third down and six. At the 39, Klein in the shotgun. And Oklahoma calls timeout. Sooners out of timeouts with 6.19 to play in the second. Trailing 7-3. Fox College football is sponsored by UPS. Let UPS put the power of logistics to work for you. By the Samsung Galaxy S3, the next big thing is already here. And by Aflac, official partner of the Heisman Trophy. Welcome back, Kansas State faced with a third down and six at the 39. They're one of four on third down conversions. Colin Klein underneath caught beautiful throw this time Tremaine Thompson with the reception a gain of 11 yards in a first down for the Wildcats nice throw but watch here where he works against Wart the linebacker a little hesitation stop and go gets inside and Klein delivers puts it right on him I don't care about the motion Gus I don't care about the hitch I care about if it gets there and Colin Klein got that one there. Jermaine Thompson last week against North Texas. Five catches, 102 yards, and two touchdowns. He's their leading receiver. Now Klein. Klein. Tackle from behind by Corey Nelson. But Bill Snyder, you just can't say enough about what this gentleman has done as the head coach of Kansas State, 21st season, National Coach of the Year for the fourth time in 2011, leading the Wildcats into the Cotton Bowl for the first time in 10 years. They lost to Arkansas, but they finished the season ranked number eight in the final BCS poll with a final record of 10 and three. And you have to consider that last year they went into the season unranked. And don't forget when he was finishing his first tenure with Kansas State, losing records his last two years. Many thought it was over, that maybe the game was done with Will Snyder. He got a hiatus, came back, and worked the old Snyder magic again. Now, Tony Jefferson just went off the field for Oklahoma, one of their better defenders. Let's see if they want to take advantage of Paulson, number 42, his replacement. Second and 10 at the 28. Klein sprints out, turns it up. And Klein gobbled up by Big David King, the senior from Houston. Four-yard gain. That will make it second, make it third, rather, and six at the 24. You got David King back at his normal defensive end position. Jefferson comes back on the field. Kansas State might want to see if there's a little hitch in his giddy-up, though. They might want to test him now, but they've got an opportunity. From the 24, third down and six. And now Colin Klein didn't like what he saw at the line of scrimmage, and he calls a timeout. Kansas State, one timeout remaining. And Charles, you always say that Kansas State, known as slow starters, and uh, that stat proves it right there. Two out of three games they've played this year, they've started slowly. Against Miami, though, they scored four of their first five possessions. They're like Novocaine, Gus. It may take a while, but for them, it usually always works. <laughs> Third and six at the 24. 
ninth play of the drive. That started at the six yard line. Colin Klein. Over the middle, caught, first down, Tyler Lockett at the 12. Colvin brings him down, but that offensive line for Kansas State, they gave Colin Klein an eternity to throw the football. That they did. Watch how they protect him and watch Klein's patience. Because of that protection, two clutches before he's able to throw it across the middle. And like he's throwing a dart, hits Tyler Lockett for the first down. That was six Mississippi Charles. <laughs> In the backyard, that's one more than you're supposed to get. First down and 10 at the 12. Hubert, Gaines to Tom Ward. Jamarcus McFarland in on the play. Now this turns into Oklahoma's challenge on defense. Remember early in the game, Oklahoma inside the 20. They've been there twice now on the goal line. Only a field goal to show for it. Can Oklahoma's defense answer that same challenge? and limit Kansas State to nothing more than a field goal attempt. And look at the clock still running. Kansas State eating up over six minutes. Second down and eight from the Oklahoma 10. Klein straight ahead. And Colin Klein goes down at the six. Remember, Kansas State was fourth nationally and led the Big 12 in time of possession last season at nearly 34 minutes a game. Not much has changed. Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator trying to figure out this complicated Kansas State offense. Teacher versus pupil. Third down and four. At the six. Klein. In the end zone. Klein! Incomplete. Intended for Lockett, but Colvin with a sensational play as he made up ground with the ball in the air. And that tells me that Colvin stayed on his keys, meaning he didn't get fooled by the run action. He stayed with his man, and don't you see that peak in the backfield? But that's only because he had the coverage. He wanted to see if the ball was coming his way. The run action is supposed to take their eyes away from their men and allow that receiver to get open. That didn't happen because of Colvin's discipline. So Anthony Cantelli last year against Oklahoma had a 54-yarder into a tip one from 23 yards away. Did we have a whistle before that play was completed? That's what I heard, Joe. But it looks like the field goal will stand. 23-yarder for Cantelli. And Kansas State on the road taking a 10 to 3 lead over OU. As we take a look at what's transpired thus far. Landry Jones trying to get the ball into the end zone. Kansas State had shut down Oklahoma and held him to a field goal on that drive. Then later on, Justin Tuggle strips it. Darrell Childs falls on a touchdown. Ty Zimmerman after the fumble by Blake Bell on short yardage near the goal line, and Kansas State takes it downfield and converts it into a field goal. K-State 10, Oklahoma 3. Kansas State picked by the media to finish sixth in the Big 12. Oklahoma, West Virginia, Texas, Oklahoma State, TCU. All picked in front of Coach Snyder's team. Almost wonder if we'll ever actually get the memo about Kansas State. <laughs> <laughs> They're always picked low. They finish higher. I think they prefer it that way. Oklahoma will start from the 25. Time now for the Aflac trivia question. Which bowl game did Oklahoma go to after losing the 2003 Big 12 championship game versus Kansas State? Ooh. Okay, I'll say nothing. Oh, you know. I, I know this one, but, you know. You always know. John. No, don't always. I love some of the ones that, that tell us different things. The one we had with Gary Beeman I loved with UCLA when he won the Heisman. His stats from winning the Heisman. Yeah, that's right, last couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Your nowadays guys are scoring 30 touchdowns and throwing 25, and Gary Beeman was like 12 and 9. 
but it's a different style of football in 1967. First down and 10 of the 25. OU with fumbles on their last two possessions. Landry Jones to Kenny Stills, and he's slung down by Adam Davis. And they pursue well, don't they? I'm talking about Kansas City. Adam Davis is a down defensive lineman. That means he started to rush the passer, saw the play, and retreated into the secondary and made the tackle. Second and seven at the 28. Oklahoma out of timeouts. Jones. Incomplete, still the intended receiver. And that's the thing that the coaches talked to us about yesterday. Landry Jones is looking for his Ryan Broyles as we answer this trivia question for you. Which bowl game did Oklahoma go to after losing the 2003 Big 12 Championship game versus Kansas State? And the answer. And it was the Sugar Bowl, and it was the BCS title game. That's back when the bowl still was a BCS title game, not a standalone bowl. That was after Kansas State beat them in the Big 12 Championship game 35-7, to and Oklahoma still qualified for the national title game. Third down and seven at the 28-yard line. Big play here for OU. A minute and 50 to go. They're one of four on third down conversions. Jones fires. Caught. First down, Oklahoma. Kenny Steele. Now we get back to the point. Landry Jones is looking for his go-to receiver. Ryan Royals is in the NFL now. And people were asking about that, saying, well, can't you just have multiple go-tos? And we'll finish after this play. Jones again, this time dumps it off to Brennan Clay. And Brennan Clay gets inside the 40. Allen Chapman with the tackle, a 14-yard gain. And I thought that Landry Jones' reply to that was telling. He said, no, I want a go-to guy. I want a guy that I know in tough situations I'll rely upon that I can look for when I really need a big completion. And Kenny Stills is that guy. Jones finding Sterling Shepard. This freshman has had a big first half. As Shepard gains 22, so just like that in three plays, Oklahoma gains 19, 14, and now 22. With a buck 20 to go in the first half. No timeout. Jones! Incomplete. McGuire turned around, couldn't get a foot in bounds. And I don't know if that was inexperience on Matwire, or did Nigel Malone do a nice job riding him over the sideline and forcing him out of bounds. Sometimes when you're a young receiver, you lose your sense of space on the field because you have to give your quarterback room to actually let you fade towards the sideline. He was already on the sideline. There was no room to put the ball there. Oklahoma in the red zone for the third time. Here in the first half, second and 10 of the 18. Jones drops it off. Miller. And he's knocked out of bounds by Jared Milo. The safety. And here we come with another third down. And here's Kansas State, shadow of their own end zone. And I get the sense that on the field, they're very comfortable with this. This is how they live. They don't get nervous about this type of situation at all. Third down and 10 at the 18-yard line. Jones looking underneath. Almost picked off. Wow. Ty Zimmerman. He'll have nightmares about that one. But they did their job again. He'll want this interception, but they forced another field goal attempt. Look at Zimmerman playing center field, breaking on the ball in front of Stills. Didn't I just say they're comfortable with this? They're used to being there. They don't have that nervousness about situations deep in their own territory. And they may come up with another winning play. It could have been better, but they'll take that to start. Michael Honeycutt, whose career long is 53 yards, did it against Kansas State last year. Good from 28 early. This from 34. And it's good. 35 seconds remaining in the first half. And we've got a battle brewing here in Norman, folks. Not the kind of game we expected or that we've seen over the last couple of years. I think that when you go back to last year's game, Bob Stoops and his staff felt very comfortable going into the half. They kicked a 54-yard field goal to make it 23-17. Honeycutt did. And they felt like their game plan was solid. I think going into the half this time, 
They're trying to figure out how do we solve Kansas State on third down. Talk about their off, like Oklahoma's offense. Because right now, Kansas State's third down defense is really what has them in the game and in the league. And since 1990, here's an interesting stat for you. Kansas State is 152-5. and five. That's 97% when leading at the half, including 6-0 last season. And how are they in close games? Weren't they 8-1 and one last year in games settled by seven points or less? <laughs> I called them zombies in the Cotton Bowl last year, <laughs> but you can't kill them. That's how they play. They don't care how it looks aesthetically. Bottom line is how do they get it done, and they don't panic under pressure. Oklahoma, last year cracked them at the, after the half. That doesn't happen very often. We'll see what happens in the second half this year. Ended up beating them 48 to 17. OU has won five straight by an average of 22 points. And they've also won eight of the last nine. Now this football at the five yard line being returned. And it's Thompson up the sideline and out of bounds with 30 seconds left. And Kansas State with one timeout remaining. Well, normally in this type of situation, you think screen, you think draw, and if they get big yardage, maybe you try and get something after that, or you just go into the locker room. See how Bill Snyder wants to play this one. And I think the 82,000 plus that are in attendance are shocked at what they're seeing right now. Bob Stoops challenging the fans to be more vocal. Right now, they probably have some challenges for Coach Stoops and his team. First down, 10 at the 37. Klein pulls it down. And Colin Klein will gain a yard and a half. And Dule with the tackle. Kansas State appears to want to go fast and try and get another playoff. If I'm them, I just take it to the locker room at 10-6 myself. I don't want anything bad happening here in Oklahoma getting any momentum. Clyde will throw it. Now he decides to scramble out of the pocket, and that'll take us to the end of the first half. Colin Klein out of bounds. A 17-yard gain. And that is the end of the first half here in Norman, and it's a surprising first half. Kansas State on top of OU. 10-6. Now we'll send you to the Pizza Hut halftime show. Here's Aaron Andrews. Welcome back to Norman, Oklahoma, where Kansas State leads the sixth-ranked Sooners 10-6 as we prepare to start the third quarter. Gus Johnson, along with Charles Davis, are you surprised at this halftime score? Probably because I'm surprised that it's so low scoring, but I'm not surprised that Kansas State's right where they are because this is a team that many times is called opportunistic, but a lot of times they force their opportunities to the front, and when people present them, they capitalize, and that's what we saw in the first half. That's why they're leading. You see the discipline from Kansas State forcing the two fumbles, one resulting in, touched, in a touchdown. And the touchdown was big because it was a third down play, and Oklahoma contributed to their own demise. On first and 10, they got a penalty to set them back behind the chains. But defense all night long. Oklahoma has moved the football, but unable to really get it to the end zone. Look at that, that's a third down play. The first pass we saw, that's a third down run. How about this, this was third and long. Tuggle forcing the fumble that Childs jumps on and scores a touchdown. And this play by Zimmerman, another one. At the end of the half, getting it done. Now guess what, just a little for added insult to injury, they didn't wait till third down there. Second down, Blake Bell fumbles the football, Ty Zimmerman jumps on it. So the opportunistic play of Kansas State in the first half, and that discipline, and confidence even in tough situations that they can handle things and it brings us to the statistics from the first half we take, as we take a look yeah the, the rush yardage not not surprising at all but oklahoma has been trying to run the ball better in recent years kansas state hasn't allowed that third downs 
Kansas State has made the bigger plays on defense on third down, held Oklahoma to only two of six, and the big one obviously highlighted there, the two turnovers that Kansas State's turned into a touchdown and a field goal. So if you're Bob Stoops, what do you tell your football team at halftime? Trailing at home, 10-6. I think that he goes, he went into halftime and went to, went to the let's not panic about it mode. We've made some mistakes, yet we're only down four. If we take care of the football and continue to handle our business, that we've moved it fairly well in the first half, obviously have to pay it off, but I don't think he went in there and ripped them because their confidence was probably a little bit shaky. I think he spent the half trying to prop them up a little bit. So Oklahoma, who deferred in the first half, will receive to start the second half. Bill Snyder's team very well prepared in the first two quarters. Anthony Cantelli will send it away. Roy Finch winning Clay, the return men from OU. And this one kicked out of the end zone. Now let's go downstairs to Julie Alexandria. Hey guys, I caught up with Coach Snyder going into the half and he said, you know, we're fortunate to be ahead. We're not moving the ball really well and we've given up a lot of yards of defense, but we're in the ball game. And then I caught up with Coach Stoops and he said, very simply, we just got to take care of the ball. Guys. And thank you very much, Julie. So Oklahoma starting from the 25. Justin Brown, Kenny Stills, your receivers at the top of your screen. Stills in the slot. And they hand it off, Whaley. And Whaley crosses the 30, picks up eight on the play. Adam Davis with the tackle. Picks up the first down and more. Nigel Malone hauls him down, but it's an 11-yard pickup for Dominique Whaley. A good block by the left tackle, Lane Johnson, getting out at the point of attack on the line of scrimmage, creating the crease. Jones steps into this throw and knocked down at the last moment by Ty Zimmerman. Zimmerman stretching out and redirecting the football. And he looked like an all-star baseball center fielder on this play. Read the ball, broke into the passing lane, and extended full out like it would be a layout catch in major leagues. This one he lays out and knocks the ball away. Zimmerman active all evening long. Had the big fumble recovery with Oklahoma threatening on the one-yard line. Lake Bell put it on the turf, second and ten. Whaley. Maybe get two yards. Arthur Brown, the linebacker. Another tackle. So third down and long. The Sooners need eight yards at the 45. And all night, third and long on defense has been the down for Kansas State to make plays. Oklahoma needs to tilt that balance back in their favor. Two of six on third down in the first half. And how big would this be if Kansas State? Could hold them off on their opening drive. Third and eight at the 45. Landry Jones over the middle and complete. And now you hear the boots. Oklahoma starts the second half. And they'll have to punt it away. Great defense by the Wildcats. And look at Jared Milo, 23, playing deep, everything in front of him, able to break on the ball with help inside from Randall Evans, number 15. Why is Kansas State having success on third down? They are winning first and second down and forcing Oklahoma into long-distance situations. Ball start, offense number 42, five-yard penalty, fourth down.
But they'll back it up five yards for Tressway, who will stand at the 26. Jermaine Thompson, the return man. Turned to punt 89 yards for a touchdown against Missouri State. Won't get an opportunity here, and it's downed at the 30. A 30 yard punt. K State on the field offensively for the first time to start the second half, and they're up 10 6. Fox College football is sponsored by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Pizza Hut. Make it great. Ten six. Kansas State, the 15th ranked team in the nation. Right now, they have the football at the 30, taking on sixth ranked Oklahoma at the beginning of conference play for these two teams in the Big 12. Colin Klein, very efficient in the first two quarters. Harper in motion. Klein hands off Hubert and Hubert. Tackle before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Javon Harris gets to him first. Tom Ward also in on the play. As we take a look at the offensive leaders for the Wildcats. Klein, 6 of 10, 42 yards passing, 55 yards rushing. Hubert closing in on 100. And rarely tackled on first contact with Hubert in the first half. No gain on the last play, second down. And 10 yards to go. Here's the pitch. Huber. Beautiful defense. Tony Jefferson right there. Only a two yard gain. Brings up third down and eight. Well, Huber was tackled on the first contact that time. What a play by Jefferson. He and Javon Harris, the other safety, were within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage when the ball was snapped. Never retreated and came forward on the play and that's how Jefferson was able to get there so quickly third down and eight at the 32 they need to go to the 40 for first down empty backfield for Klein Colin Klein underneath caught by Lockett and Lockett close to the first down it will depend on the spot that should be short that should be short. It was a good tackle in the open field by Gabe Lynn. That should be a fourth down. Well, no, judging by close. our unofficial line. Looks good, doesn't it? It does. I thought it was a good tackle. I thought he was short. That was my initial thought was the tackle was made and he was down. They needed to get to the 40-yard line. Good eyes, partner. Man, I didn't know they were that good. Watch the tackle by Lynn in open field, but look at Lockett stretch out. But he doesn't stretch enough. Look where he goes down. If he reaches the ball, he's got the first down. But see, as he goes down, he never reaches. And it looks like Colin Klein and the Wildcats are going to go for it. Fourth down and in inches at their own 40. And dangerous play here and the play usually is quarterback sneak if they decide to actually go for it if they don't try to draw them off with a long count there's a quarterback sneak he might not get it let's see as Klein leans forward second effort and the big fella Colin Klein 6'5 226 gets the first down the first effort you nailed it. They had him. See right there? He's not getting there. Look at Ward over the top. But then Optimus Klein comes out <laughs> and gains the yard. See? Right there they've got it. But look at the feet keep churning. He moves laterally, finds the space, and falls forward for the first down. First down and 10 at the 41 now for Kansas State. A handoff. And Hubert just stumbling forward. 
David King with the tackle, but Hubert was such a prolific running back in high school. He's from Waco High, and he broke the Waco City Prep single season rushing record over 2,500 yards, which was held by a guy that was a pretty good football player <laughs> in the NFL. Some guy named Ladanian Tomlinson? Yes. And he was not recruited by his hometown school, Baylor, because of academics and their concern about his size. Second and five at the 46. Alan Klein. And Alan Klein tackled up high. Wow. Corey Nelson. Colony. That was a physical play by Corey Nelson. That was a that was a seven on seven right there. Watch the play by Nelson as he steps up into the gap. Goes inside the attempted block by Tavon Rooks and lassos him down. Not an illegal play, a strong, aggressive play by Nelson. So on third down and four, Colin Klein lines up in the shotgun at the 47 yard line. He needs to go to the Oklahoma 49. And a timeout called by OU. 9.34 to play in the third quarter. Mike Stoops. Fox College Football is sponsored by Reese's, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter. Welcome back, 10-6. Kansas State faced with the third down and four at the 47. They've spread them out a lot on third down. And in this game, I believe Oklahoma's had to use three timeouts on defense already tonight. Klein wants to run it, bottled up, Klein leans forward. Well, let's see where they spot the football. Remember, Kansas State went for it on fourth and inches on this drive at the 39. They went for it then. You would think he'd go ahead and do it now with a little bit better field position because he doesn't think it's a gamble with Klein. He's shocked if Klein can't pick up that distance. Quarterback sneaking it or quarterback run game. Klein looks like he's saying about timeout so they can go talk about it. 8.54 to play third quarter. 10-6 Kansas State. Welcome back. 8.54 to go. In the third, 10-6, Kansas State going for it off fourth down and one. Charles, this seems like a huge moment in this football game. To me, it feels like both sides are thinking this game can almost be decided on this drive. We've had timeouts on back-to-back -back plays, one by Oklahoma on defense, one by Kansas State, the second fourth down try for Kansas State on this drive. Here's Klein under center now. Colin Klein. And now they'll kick it. Well, they went from showing that they would go for it to the, we'll try and draw you off sides and use your momentum against you. Good discipline by Oklahoma not to jump. And now Bill Snyder will run the punt team out there and one of his favorite weapons, and that's been his punter, Ryan Doerr. Ryan Doerr has been terrific, consistently pinning. Oklahoma inside their own 20-yard line. And he gets off a of beauty here, and he'll do it again. Fair caught at the 12. A 43-yard punt for Ryan Doerr. Now tomorrow, Fox NFL Sunday has a full slate of NFL action featuring the Buccaneers taking on Tony Romo and the Cowboys in Dallas. 
or watch LaShawn McCoy and the Eagles battle Larry Fitzgerald and the Cardinals in Arizona. It all begins with the Built Ford Tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. How about that Rams-Bears game? How will Jay Cutler bounce back as we look at the offensive leaders for Oklahoma tonight? Landry Jones, of course, throwing it. Dominique Whaley ran the ball particularly well early in the game. And Kenny Stills is the go-to guy. But their connection has waned a little bit as this game has moved on. Jones and the Oklahoma offense will have to attack the long field with the football at the 12. And they put it on the deck again! Kansas State has it! Adam Davis with the fumble recovery. The third fumble for OU. What Oklahoma's going to say is that that should be a forward pass and an incomplete pass. Watch Landry Jones. He's going to claim that he pitched it forward. That ball never really was received by him in order to pitch it forward, in my estimation. To me, that's a fumble. See, he's trying to say that he just pitched it forward. It should be an incomplete pass. I don't know if he possessed it enough to call it that. And if this holds up, Kansas State with the football at the 10, their offense is back on the field. Three fumbles by Oklahoma. See, that's super slow-mo. You could make a case that he caught it and tried to pitch it forward. Naked eye, that sure looked like a fumble here. Ruling on the field is a fumble. Spears plays under further review. He could get a break on this on the review. And now let's join our rules analyst, Mike Pereira, in our Fox Command Center. Mike, what do you see? Well, here's the, here's the issue now. It's a backward pass. So what he has to do is clearly establish possession long enough to now perform a second act. So did he actually maintain possession? Remember now, slow motion really skews this. So you have to look at it at regular speed, which they're gonna look at too. Did he actually maintain possession of that ball or get possession of the ball, which then would make him a runner, which then makes it a fumble. Now, Mike, this is what they ruled that he did not. Mike, and again, I think this is gonna be interesting because to me, he doesn't have that ball to actually, just like completing the process of a catch, to me, he doesn't maintain that long enough. Although, you look at that slow motion there, there he pushes the ball forward, um, but it's, it's really a tight, tight play. But Mike, are they looking at it in slow motion or are they looking at it in regular speed? That's that. I mean, that's they're going to look at it. They're going to look at it at both ways. But just like in the NFL, you're told to look at it at regular speed. So just the way that the officials looked at it on the field. When you get to the sideline and you're trying to determine is a foot down, is a foot down on the sideline, then you slow it up and actually stop it. But here, going in slow motion, they'll take a look at it. But they're going to focus on a live play like that. You know, even you kind of see his feeling when he just let go of the ball so quickly. You know, to me, I think the fact that they ruled fumble, I just, other than that slow, slow motion, I don't know if you can overturn it. Mike, I think, I think what you said about second act comes into play here because I think it looks like one act by Landry Jones. Ball hits his hands, ball comes forward. A case can be made that he was trying to push it forward, but I'm not sure they're going to overturn this one. I think it's the old notion to me, you kind of have to look at things and say it has to be so clear in replay to overturn what the actual ruling on the field was. They use the same terminology, indisputable visual evidence, the, the decision that's going to have to be made by the replay assistant upstairs. And remember, he makes that decision, not the referee, is if there's enough to actually reverse After it based on review, that. The ruling is incomplete pass. It'll be second down. Oklahoma catches a major break. The game clock to 845. 845 on the game clock. They, Mike, thanks a lot. It, Gus, they watched it. They determined it off the super slow-mo. Because in the super slow-mo, when we really slowed it down, you could see it hit his hands, and you could see him kind of push the ball forward. Watch. As it hits his hands, he's pushing it forward towards the running back. When you watched it at the naked eye at regular speed, that looks like it hits his hands, bounces off, and is a fumble. I'm with you. Oklahoma caught a major break. 
and gives them an opportunity now to try and convert on second and long. And let's see if that wakes up this Sooners football team, especially their offense. A number of mistakes made by OU's offense this evening. Down at home, 10-6. Landry Jones with a shotgun on second and 10. Jones under pressure, dumps it off. Damian Williams, and Damian Williams has a first down. Meshack Williams with the tackle. And when things get tough, you're looking for players who will make plays, and Damian Williams did exactly that, finding a way to get first down yardage on that pass. Williams running now. Damian Williams. Transfer from Arizona Western, where he led the NCAA in rushing 161 yards a game and a school record 31 touchdowns last season. Jones, far side, Brown, and he gets out of bounds. Alan Chapman there defensively for K-State. You noted before they started, after they got the ball back, would this help them with their momentum? And thus far, that is true. And you wonder about Kansas State if they got comfortable on the bench thinking that they had the football. Over the middle, and another nice catch by Sterling Shepard. Shepard has been terrific this evening. He's His fourth catch. He stepped into the breach. Remember Matwire was the highly recruited guy, but he got smacked early by Arthur Brown, and we haven't really heard from him since. Sterling Shepard has stepped into the breach for Oklahoma and picked up the pace. Four catches, 72 yards for Shepard. First down at midfield. Jones, near side, Shepard again. He'll get to the 40 before being slung out of play. Nigel Malone, Jared Milo, defensively for the Wildcats. They have hit, look at this, now at Oklahoma, after 20 seconds, 21 seconds between plays tonight, that's not how they approached the first two games. The open week helped them with the experience with these guys, the youngsters, and when they hit big plays, they go even faster. Second and one. Play fake, Jones. Caught. McGuire out of bounds at the 12. Now the Sooners have their rhythm as they quickly get back to the line of scrimmage. But he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, and, and you see the hat on the ground from the official. Here's a handoff. Damian Williams. I thought when he stepped out, was forced out, and the hat hit the ground from the official, that you couldn't be the first guy to touch the ball when he came back in bounds. And that has gone past now, so Oklahoma continues their drive. On the positive note for Oklahoma's receivers, I'm seeing a real physicality on this drive after they catch the football and catch it and get upfield. Second and five at the nine-yard line. Jones underneath. Kenny Stills, is it a catch? Yes, it is. And they'll get a flag on the play for the, for the I'm sure it's going to be interference in the, if, on the back play, of, on the back side of Stills. And let's clarify, Matwire, when he was forced out of bounds in, in the college game, Gus, you can get back in and be the first guy to catch it. Legal play. Pass interference, defense, number 15. Kelly's declined. He's all the play, first down. Look at the throw. Stills going down, draped over the top. Oh, looks like that ball hit the ground. But there is a pass interference penalty anyway. First down and goal at the two. And no belldozer here. Andrew Jones staying in. Handing it off. Miller. Bell comes into the game.
But if you're Oklahoma, you know that's what they know you're coming with. If you're going to throw the ball in these situations, second down is always the key down. Do they do any type of a fake and let Bell, who is a natural quarterback, have a run pass option? Second and goal at the three. Can Oklahoma finally punch it into the end zone? Bell running. Bell! Touchdown, OU! Five minutes remaining in the third quarter. And Oklahoma finally gets six. Michael Honeycutt in to attempt the extra point. Sooners up 13-10. Some big moments in this game, folks. Oklahoma catches a break on the review. It may have scared them because they march it right down the field and the belldozer hits pay dirt. Oklahoma, after the controversial play, goes 11 plays, 88 yards, eating up 346. Landry Jones, six for six on the drive, 65 yards. And don't forget the catch by Stills down deep that Oklahoma declined the penalty. It would have been a penalty. It would have been half the distance, but it still would not have been first and goal where it was. It would have been deeper in the field. But give Oklahoma credit. They caught breaks. They capitalized. This is Tyler Lockett. At the 30. Lockett with a very good go. return as he gets up to the 35. A 23-yard return. Let's go to Aaron Andrews for a game break. Hey, let's update you on how Rutgers is doing in Fayetteville, Arkansas, guys. Fourth quarter here, and how about Gary Nova having a game against the Razorbacks? That's a 60-yard touchdown to Mark Harrison. Right now, Rutgers is leading this game 35-26, to 26, guys. Thank you very much. Aaron, and you feel bad for what's happened at Arkansas. This whole thing, if, it's, if that holds up, a season so full of promise implodes in the first four weeks of the 2012 campaign. Here's the run. Matter of fact, the last Arkansas, the last time we saw Arkansas was against Kansas State in the Cotton Bowl, which was a very good day for the Razorbacks. And if after that game, they could have made a case that they were the third best team in the country at the end of that one because their losses last year to number one and number two at the time. One LSU, two Alabama, and those two finished one and two. Oklahoma State would have had a major dispute with them, but Arkansas still could have made the claim. Second down and seven now at the 38. Klein, play fit, sets up deep in the pocket to the sideline. Oh, what a catch! Chris Harper. Quality reception, a gain of 21 and a first down in front of Aaron Coleman. There's nothing you can do here but say excellent catch because Aaron Coleman's coverage was right on. Draped all over him, a hand in front, got a hand on the football, and give Chris Harper credit for making the play. Second catch for Harper. First down and 10 at the 41. Kansas State. Inside Oklahoma territory. Klein steps back. Klein up the sideline. Incomplete. And he had an open man for Nate Thompson. Had a step. But Klein unable to put it on him. But you see the benefits of the heavy run by Kansas State, where now they get into excellent field position. Nice down and distance, first and 10. You have safeties that they're hoping will overreact to the run fake, and you've got a guy running free. He was open. Klein just couldn't put it on him. Second down and 10 of the 41. Empty backfield for Colin Klein. 
This is usually where he likes to run to pick up four or five. Klein delivers. Klein knocked down. Great play on defense by Oklahoma. Javon Harris knocks it down. Intended for Tremaine Thompson. So take a look here. Klein goes back. Oklahoma retreats. They only end up having one guy rush the pass or everyone else dropping for the shallow cross. And Javon Harris with good catch-up speed knocks it away. So that brings up a third down and ten. Now the Oklahoma 41. Kansas State needs to go to the 31 for a first down. Four receivers at the bottom. Klein. Let's it go. Oh, incomplete. Wow. That one just simply dropped by Terrell Miller, a junior from New Orleans. Terrell Miller had just two catches in the regular season in 2011. This would have made up for that in a big way. And it goes right through his mitts, unable to secure it. Not even contested till after the ball has gone past. The Oklahoma defense holds. So Dorr comes in to punt. All four of his punts inside the 20 yard line, trying to get this one high in the air. This kid is wonderful. Maybe the best punter we've seen. And, and works in tandem with a special teams unit that understands positioning. No one there to catch the punt. You go catch the punt and down it. You don't have to let it hit the ground if there's no one there to catch it. Now this week, the Fox College Football Social Poll on Facebook asked fans, who is the best quarterback in the Big 12? Here are the results of the poll. To cast your vote, log on to Facebook.com backslash Fox Sports. And 57% of you said... Geno Smith from West Virginia. West Virginia first year in the conference. And Geno Smith slings it like a traditional quarterback. Colin Klein almost shouldn't even be in a quarterback category. He's just a different animal entirely. We asked Mike Stoops what's it like to prepare for him. Who have you prepared for like that before? He said no one. Totally unique. So Oklahoma starting deep in their own end as Dominique Whaley picks up two. Here's something for us to keep in mind. All the bumps and bruises along the way. Look at the scoreboard. Oklahoma's ahead. Did they catch some breaks in the last drive? They did. But did they make their own breaks once they got them? They certainly did that too and put it in the end zone. Now they have the lead and the football again. Second down and eight. Landry Jones. Fires Justin Brown. And a first down. Is it just me or is Landry Jones getting a little bit more time to throw football now? Certainly is. And when he has the time and his feet are clean in the pocket and he can step into throws, that's when his accuracy rises. First down from the 16. Brown on the blitz, they pick him up, and once again, it's Justin Brown with the reception in front of Alan Chapman. So take a look at the total yards by half. Oklahoma, 182 in the first, 128 in the second. Kansas State slowing down a bit. Second down and four. Don't be surprised at some point you see some stop and go action with an Oklahoma receiver as tightly contested as the corners are playing the receivers right now. Play fake, Jones off his back foot, picked off. Ty Zimmerman at the 42. Mistake after mistake after mistake. Three turnovers for Oklahoma. Two fumbles, now a Landry Jones interception. And Kansas State is in business. And frankly, this throw kind of defies belief that that's a fourth-year guy at the quarterback position making that throw. He worked so hard in the offseason working on mechanics and footwork, 
and it got away from him on that play. If he didn't feel right on it, take the sack, move on. Ty Zimmerman, a fumble recovery, now an interception. Kansas State starts at the 38. They hand it off straight ahead, and it's Hubert fighting for extra yards. But in on the play, David King. We've mentioned his name a number of times this evening. Uh, he's their bell cow up front. He's their best defensive lineman. He's had to play tackle the first two games with guys not there. They got Casey Walker back who missed the first two games for personal reasons. Able to kick David King out to his natural defensive end position. He'll come inside at tackle and pass rush in key situations. Second down and nine at the 37. Klein, Hubert. As he jitterbugs. For maybe three yards. And that'll bring up third down and six. In the first half, it was Kansas State's defense picking up their offense and helping them out. This is a situation now that OU is looking for their defense to pick up their offense. Third down at six. At the 34, four receivers at the bottom. Klein drills it in and a first down. Tyler Lockett cradles the football and a first down for Kansas State and folks that takes us to the end of the third quarter. We head into the fourth Oklahoma at home up by only three. Welcome back. Start of the fourth quarter, three-point ball game. The number six team in the nation holding on. Kansas State has scored 10 points off turnovers. Landry Jones throwing his first interception of the night. And Kansas State trying to capitalize off another turnover right here. First down and 10 at the Oklahoma 27. I like the matchup up top if he wants to throw Harper against Jefferson, the safety. Klein. Bounces it outside with the running room, and he tiptoes out of bounds after about a seven and a half, eight yard gain. And let's go to Aaron Andrews for a game break. Gus, let's update you what's going on in Tallahassee. How about the game offensive coordinator Chad Morris is calling? That's Taj Boyd to Sammy Watkins, who finds Andre Ellington. Yes, sir, his second touchdown of the game. But Florida State has just scored, and that score is. 28 to 27. All right, thank you, Aaron. Second and two at the 19. For Colin Klein, John Hubert in the backfield. He'll run it straight ahead and pick up the first down and more. Spins down. Hubert inside the 10 yard line. Tony Jefferson with the saving tackle. And look at the vision of Hubert. Once he sees the crack, look at that. And now he gets through it. There's McFarland, 97, trying to hold him. He can't. Spins out of it. Jefferson has to sling him to the ground. The Wildcats were involved in nine games, decided by seven points or fewer last season, and won eight of them. First down and goal at the eight. Hubert. And Hubert with the low center of gravity. Gets close to the five, Tom Ward. Do you remember the, the game Battleship? Yes. Yes. Said? yes. E6. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right? Right. And then finally score, a direct hit. Right. There is none of that on John Huber. It's been rare that it's been a direct shot on him. He finds a way to make you only get a piece of him, and he finds a way to get forward on 98% of his runs. Second down and goal. Ball at the five. Colin Klein wants to run it. Outside! Klein! Touchdown! K-State! What patience! I loved how you described that, the patience. Why? He allowed his blocking to form, and it starts here. 
Watch Braden Wilson, his fullback. He's coming here to block, but watch how Klein waits for this play to develop. He doesn't go too fast, otherwise he loses the block. He waits, now he gets the block from Braden Wilson, then he gets a second one from Hubert. Tyler Lockett gets in the way, and Colin Klein gets into the end zone. So Anthony Cantelli comes in to tip the extra point. Up and good. Colin Klein last year tied an FBS record for quarterbacks with 27 rushing touchdowns. He picks up a big one here. K-State up. Fox College football is sponsored by the all-new 2013 Ford Escape. It's what happens when you go further. And by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Responsibility. What's your policy? We've got a game for you tonight, folks. Kansas State 17, Oklahoma 13. Colin Klein with the big touchdown run. For the Wildcats. And something you mentioned in the break rings so true. It looks simple, what Kansas State's doing on offense. But what they're trying to do is just beat you with numbers. That's why Colin Klein was waiting for Braden Wilson to cross over. That gave them the advantage with the extra blocker. Bob Stoops talked about that to Julie Alexandria at the top of the show. Extra blockers in the quarterback run game, hard to solve, and that gave them an advantage again. This is Brennan Clay at the 20. And Clay wrapped up at the 35-yard line. A 33-yard return. And that brings us to tonight's Ford game summary. Take a look at Colin Klein getting what we expected out of him in the second half, not the same as last year in Manhattan. The three takeaways leading to 17 points for Kansas State. Oklahoma, the 14-0 record at home versus ranked opponents under head coach Bob Stoops is getting a test this evening. So much history between these two generals roaming the sidelines. Bill Snyder coached Bob Stoops when he was a safety at Iowa. Gave him his first head coaching job at Kansas State as a DB's coach. He's there for eight years on the run. Williams down the sideline. Flag on the play. Williams, touchdown. But there's a flag all the way back at the 40. And there's an official pointing. Williams may have stepped out of bounds. Holding, up over 19. 10-yard penalty, repeat first down. That's Justin Brown. Jay Norvell is the wide receivers coach and co-offensive coordinator. And he wants to spend a lot of time, and he always does, teaching his receivers and talking to them about being physical in the run game. But he gets a little cloth and pads of Allen Chapman, number three. And that's where the step out occurred. The officials on the spot for both calls. So first down at 16 at the 29. The sixth ranked team in the country, Oklahoma. Trailing at home to Kansas State. Landry Jones fumbled the snap. Jones, and he dumps it out of bounds. And that was good presence because he saved the yardage that would have been lost by getting rid of the football. Gabe Eichert is the center. Tough snap there for Landry Jones. Remember, Ben Habert was supposed to be the starting center this year, had to retire due to injuries. Gabe Eichert played center about half the season last year and moved over, and usually it's a seamless deal. That was a tough snap. Second down and 16 at the 29. Now Brennan Clay lining up behind Landry Jones in the pistol. Jones. All caught. Nice throw. And this will be... Brandon Green with the reception. The tight end picking up nine on second and 16. Now third and seven at the 38. Jones bouncing. Jones underneath. And Landry Jones and the Oklahoma offense will punt it away. And the pressure got him off of his mark. Because watch the pressure on Landry Jones in the pocket. Number 44, Ryan Mueller. Number two, Justin Tuggle. See, they made him move. 
And when he moved and got out there, wasn't able to get reset and get anything on the football. Third punt for Tressway. Tyler Lockett. Back deep. Way gets it away. Now Lockett coming up. Did he touch it? I've not seen a definitive call about possession. But I, it appears that he's going to say he didn't touch it and the ball will go to Kansas State. First touching, Oklahoma, Oklahoma ball. Wow! Wow! I did not see that on the definitive call. Whoa! I'm, I, they're huddling again, Gus. I'm not sure that's going to stand. Because we're getting another huddle from the officials on the field as we speak. Let's take correction, a look. Correction, correction. Illegal touching by the kicking team. First down. He Kansas touched State. it. Yeah. See. Did he touch it? But but the but, but see the initial touch was Oklahoma. So that's what he was trying to say. So that's why it will stay with Kansas State. No possession. They corrected the call. 17-13 K-State. Eleven fifty nine remaining in the fourth quarter. Seventeen thirteen Kansas State gets the football back at their own twenty three. <laughs> There's Tyler Lockett feeling fortunate because either run up and catch the ball on the punt or get out of the way. And that one almost became a disaster for Kansas State. Klein on the run. <laughs> All caught. Tannehill is tied in. And Tannehill with some nice running after the catch as he picks up 20 yards to Montre Hurst. Stops him. They don't throw to the tight ends very often, but when they do, they get big yardage. Tannehill, that's his third catch of the year. His previous two, he's out to 25 yards a catch. They get him into open field after they fool you in the run game. First down at the 44. Here's a jet sweep. Lock it. And he stopped by Javon Harris. Now let's go to Aaron Andrews in Los Angeles for a game break. Let's show you how LSU Auburn ended, guys. Five seconds left, and Kyle Frazier, well, he's picked off by LSU's Therald Simon. And LSU would go on to win 12 to 10. This is the first time in Auburn school history they have three losses before October. Well, thank you very much, Aaron. Second and seven at the 47. For Kansas State leading at 17 13. Colin Klein follows his blocks. Hops forward, a flag on the play. Holding offense, number 73, 10 yard penalty, second down. Devon Rooks, the right tackle. Yeah, you see him, he's got that front, front face, it's almost a cross face in wrestling, except he got it in the chest to hold him up. As he brought down Jamarcus McFarland. Well, that'll make it second and 17 at the 37. Penalties. Klein giving it up to Tremaine Thompson. And Thompson picks up about five. As we approach the 10 minute mark of the fourth quarter. Big third down coming up for Kansas State. And the hard part for Bob Stoops and his brother Mike is that just because it's third and long, it doesn't mean that you can play pass only with Colin Klein. They like to spread you out, keep the box count small in here, and possibly run it inside if he doesn't have a pass play available. Third down and 12 of the 42. They need to go to the Oklahoma 46 for a first down. Wow. 
And Klein calls a timeout. One timeout remaining for K-State. Back after this. Another big moment in this football game. Third down and 12 for Colin Klein in Kansas State. Sooners want the ball back, trailing 17-13. Klein in the shotgun. Three receivers at the bottom of your screen. There's Wart. He may be the spy on Klein. If he tries to get out and run, Klein. Sideline, he's got his receiver. Thompson, first down on K-State. What a play. Tremaine Thompson wide open, and Colin Klein put it on the money. 26 yards. How does he do this all the time? Because what they did was everything went this way and moved him out here. Look at how their secondary responded. They got everything going to the middle and then swung Thompson from the inside position to the outside. And Colin Klein, say what you want about his motion on big plays. He looks like Johnny Unitas at times. First down and 10 at the OU 32. Hubert running. And Hubert dragged down at the 25-yard line by Indule. Another set of downs they got on the first on the throw, and the clock continues to tick. 840 and counting. Second and three at the 25. Hubert again, looking for the first down. Turned away. David King, Tony Jefferson. 8-12 to go, though. Klein and the Wildcats. Very patient offensively. And there is some serious anxiety on the Oklahoma sideline. And they picked up a first down. Because now what Oklahoma has to be thinking is how do they create a turnover? They've been a turnover machine, taking the ball away under Bob Stoops. Has not happened so far, not has not happened much in this young season. Klein throwing to his tight end once again. Tannehill, he stays inbounds and picks up a first down. Pass is complete to Travis Tannehill. And watch Tannehill as he turns it upfield. Now he feeds his pads to Javon Harris and makes him pay for coming through to make the tackle. Continues on for a little bit of extra yardage. And Bill Snyder, I'm wondering if he's thinking right here, touchdown exclusively, and not kick a field goal, give Landry Jones a chance to bring him down and go ahead. First down and goal with the nine, eight play of the drive for Kansas State. Hubert. State, 7-27 away from upsetting the sixth-ranked team in the country on their home pitch. And watch Hubert again, all right? 5'7", 190 or so, but watch. He gets caught in the morass there. There's Harris, 30. Ward, 21. They don't get a direct shot. And McFarland unable to put him down either, and he squirts through for the touchdown. Eight plays, covering 77 yards. K-State eats up four minutes and 32 seconds. Bill Snyder's team, relentless, persistent, physical, and focused. 24-13, Kansas State. Fox College Football is sponsored by AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T, rethink possible. Upset brewing in Norman, Kansas State leading Oklahoma 24 to 13 with 7.27 to go in the fourth quarter.
Landry Jones has work to do. Colin Klein has been terrific. As you take a look at the scoring drive, eight plays, 77 yards. Heating up 432. How about Kansas State now for the game? Eight and a half minutes more of time of possession than Oklahoma. When Kansas State beat North Texas last week, North Texas had the ball for 37 minutes. Not normal for Kansas State, but they found a way to win the game. Roy Finch, Brennan Clay back deep. This one short, Miller. And Miller gets up to the 35. And that brings us to this evening's Reese's Perfect Play. And it's the play that really set the tone for the evening. Third and long, deep in their own territory is Oklahoma. Kansas State's coverage is tight in the secondary. They get after Landry Jones. Justin Tuggle, a former quarterback himself, knocks it free, reminiscent of the play of his father, Jesse Tuggle, a five-time pro bowler in the NFL. And Jarrell Childs falls on it in the end zone. The first touchdown of the evening for Kansas State. First down to their own 35. Jones. Ball caught. McGuire. And there's plenty of time left in this game. Oklahoma, Over seven minutes. Sorry, guys. Oklahoma with two timeouts remaining. And they hand it off to Damian Williams. And we're seven minutes, and as prolific as Oklahoma can be, and as quick strike as they can be on offense, plenty of time. They can score, and their defense can hold for them. And those are big ifs, the way Kansas State makes you earn every snap. First down at the 47. Jones in trouble. Landry Jones, and he is sacked. Not sure if the ball came free at the end. There seemed to be a little bit of a scramble at the end. Landry Jones sacked for the second time tonight. A loss of eight. Once he got hemmed in, Meshack Williams and on the ground, Javante Boyd making the play. He had to dive on it to secure the football. Second down and 18. Jones in trouble again, but gets it away to his running back, Williams. Williams trying to get out of bounds. And he is wrestled down. Ryan Mueller. I think we're in four down territory. They don't get it here. They're going to have to go for it on fourth down. Third down and nine, Jones. And he gets it. Throws a strike to guess who? Sterling Shepard. A 17 yard pickup. First down, OU. That's as well thrown a ball as we've seen from Landry Jones in a while now. He stuck that right on Sterling Shepard. And that young freshman has grown up quickly. Number three, Shepard. First down, Brittany Clay comes in. Standing next to Jones in the backfield. They give it to Clay. Turns it up, picks up a first down. See, this is not what Tom Hayes, the defensive coordinator for Kansas State, has in mind. Oklahoma picking up big chunks on, uh, of yardage on plays, not using much clock. Jones going for everything. Out of bounds. Latoire, the intended receiver. And that stops the clock at 5 one I think that's a play that they'll go back over with a young receiver and maybe some timing with Landry Jones. You have to have room to fade in the end zone. By the time he's balls released, Matuire's over at the sideline, no chance to make the play. Second and 10. Jones draw play, running play. Clay gets to the 20. Stills is the go-to here. He'll be at the bottom of your screen, to the right of your screen. 
but Shepard has made plays at the top. There's Stills with our Fox player pointer, and Shepard in the slot at the top. Third down and six at the 20. Here's Jones. And this would call Justin Brown, and he'll get to the 10. The former Big Ten product, and we'd like to welcome those of you that watch Notre Dame defeat Michigan. We've got a great one here, folks. 4.21 to go in the fourth. Oklahoma, the sixth-ranked team in the nation, trailing Kansas State at home, 24-13. Sooners have turned it over three times. Jones over the middle, caught. The freshman dives. Touchdown, Sterling Shepard. Landry Jones will stay on the field. Oklahoma going for two. Down 24-19. Need the two to get within a field goal of Kansas State if they're able to get the ball back. Jones in the shotgun with Brennan Clay. Here's Jones rolling out. Timeout. Oklahoma. Wow. Second charge Oklahoma. 30 seconds. With only one timeout remaining now. Both teams with only one timeout. Did you see that set, partner? Watch this, okay? Because look over here. Do you know who this is? That's your starting left tackle, Lane Johnson. They moved him out there. Remember, he came to Oklahoma as a junior college tight end and quarterback before growing into an offensive tackle position. And that was a play just to create confusion on the defense. Don't forget next week, UT rolls into Stillwater to take on the Cowboys. A game developing now, 24-19, 4.09 to go. OU back on the field, going for two. Kenny Stills in the slot at the bottom. Ready play in the backfield. Jones. And it's deflected and knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Justin Tuggle once again making a play. So with 409 to go, Kansas State with a 24-19 lead. Twenty-four nineteen, and with this score and this time. Bob Stoops with only one timeout remaining. Does he have a decision to make? Uh, he has a decision to make about onside kicking. I think with it, when they had to take the timeout in the two-point play and left him with only one, it may have forced his hand where he may have to onside kick, and you know Kansas State's going to line up hand steam. So O'Hara. Into deep and out of the end zone. He drilled that one. Kansas State with it at the 25. But they're going to rely on their defense here. And let's go downstairs to Julie Alexandria. Hey guys, I just caught defensive coordinator Mike Stoops rallying his troops, saying, "Keep your head up, keep yourselves together. You got to go Get back out. out there and you got to play. Get yourself geared up and keep playing on." They're playing on means they can't give up first downs. Just one timeout left. They can't allow Kansas State to put together any type of drive and bleed this clock out. They're counting on them to stuff them here and have a chance to get the football back. First down and 10 of the 25 for Colin Klein. And Kansas State running the football. McFarland downing John Hewitt. 
Each team with one timeout remaining. And Kansas State's three scoring drive, they've held the ball for 659, 254, and 432. Second down and 11. Klein wants to throw it. Clock stops. 323. Third down and 11. That's a good play on defense by Oklahoma because they took away the primary target. He wanted to go to Tremaine Thompson after the fake into the secondary. And Oklahoma took that option away from him. Third down and 11 out of the 24. The Sooners. They feel the momentum swinging. They've got a chance to get the rock back right here. Clyde over the middle. Clyde first down, K-State. What a play. Jermaine Thompson on third and 11 picks up 13. And how about not just the throw, but the route? Because Tom Ward in the middle of the field, that receiver crossed his face, and he didn't chuck him or put his body on it. Allowed him to run right past him. Watch Ward in the middle and watch the route. Unable to get there, puts nothing on him. He gets past him. First down. A fresh set of downs for the Wildcats. 2.56 away. Hubert. And Hubert chopped down Javon Harris after a five yard pickup. Don't forget, coming up next, Aaron and the guys with the ATT post game show, Joey Harrington and the Heisman Trophy winner, Eddie Jewell. If you're Kansas State, if you snap this ball any anywhere outside of five seconds on the play clock, you're doing your team a disservice. Let it bleed down. Second down and five. Klein to Hubert. And Hubert will gain two and a half. <laughs> and a timeout called. Oklahoma out of timeouts, trailing 24-19. Colin Klein, masterful performance this evening as the leading man for Kansas State. Wildcats now face with a third down and three. Oklahoma out of timeouts. And I've got to keep the ball in the hands of number seven quarterback run game here. Do or die for the Sooner defense right here, right now. And now Kansas State will call a timeout. What's transpired here in the second half? The Bell Dozer makes its second appearance of the game. This time it works Blake Bell into the end zone. But Colin Klein, the inspiration for the Bell Dozer, does what he does best, gets in, and John Huber finds his way through. And then Landry Jones, team down 24-13, leads him with a big drive and hits Sterling Shepard for a score that leads us, leads us where we are now, 24-19. But the most important statistic the story of this game, turnovers. And look at the points off of them for Kansas State. 17 off of the three takeaways. Oklahoma normally takes it away from their opponents. Zero on the evening. And the timeout situation also is now coming into play. Third down and three at the 43. Kansas State has converted three third downs in a row. Clyde. Hesitates, Clyde, first down, Wildcats. 
no one has any timeouts left, neither side. So Oklahoma can't stop them at all. With Colin Klein now picking up the first down of the game. Twenty-four nineteen. Remember no play, remember no timeouts for Kansas State. Play clock at ten. They're just getting to the line of scrimmage. Looks like they'll take a knee and try to bleed this one out. And right. that's what he does. It's the right play with no timeouts left for Oklahoma. The clock should run out for them. How about this? The teacher, Bill Snyder, comes into Norman, Oklahoma, and school in session against his former pupil, Bob Stoops. Major upset in college football. Last week, USC falling to Stanford in Palo Alto on Fox Sports. This week, Kansas State coming into Norman. And they're 34 seconds away from upsetting the Oklahoma Sooners. Should not have to take another snap. And now, Bob Stoops had been 7-1 against, against Bill Snyder. Bob Stoops was 14-0 against ranked teams. At home, that streak comes to an end as the two gentlemen meet and hug. 24-19 the final. Kansas State. What a performance. Now let's take you to Aaron Andrews in our Fox studio for the AT&T Fox College Saturday postgame show.